one tutorial video. My name is Kevin Creamer. I'm the Certification Administrator here at SFFMA, and we'll be going through how to use the program today. If you do have any questions, please feel free to give me a call at area 512-454-3473. You can also email me at certificate.sffma.org. So the first thing we want to talk about is what has changed significantly since the old program, or more importantly, what has not been transferred over to the new website. You will still want to use the older online program, and you would get to that by mousing over certification, and go to SFFMA Online. When you select that, it will open up a login screen for this other website that you're probably familiar with. I'm going to go ahead and log into a dummy department where we have already set up. This is the area where you would want to go in and do your roster maintenance, as well as printing your uh, updated invoice once you make any corrections to that roster. Uh, at this point in the year, we have invoice for 2017, so you can go in, make your additions and uh, edit and generate that 2017 renewal invoice. You can also go here to uh, create a mid-year in invoice. If you have someone join, say, February, March, June, you can add them to the roster and print an invoice for just their individual dues. Going back over to the main website, to access the area for coordinators, you'll first want to – actually, let me sign back out and sign back in again. Once you sign in here, and I'm going to log into that dummy department again, as the coordinator for that department. You'll see it now shows that John is signed in. I can now go to Certification and SFMA Online 3.1. This page is available to everybody. Um, we do have a user's guide that is available here on the website. It's about seven pages. I do suggest that you go ahead and print out a copy of this if you have not already. Uh, like I said, it's about seven pages. It will give you step-by-step -step instructions, pretty much exactly what we're going to be going through on the video, but it will be there for you in print if you need to refer back to it. Um, starting in January, we will also be adding very short tutorial videos to the website for minor portions of this larger video. Uh, I'm not expecting the current video to run more than about 30 minutes. So the first thing we'll do for a second at this point is we'll go ahead and hit Enter. Currently only the certification coordinator of a given department will have access to this area of the website. If you happen to be the coordinator at two or more departments, you would at this point need to contact the Austin office and have me transfer you between the departments until such time as we're able to get you access to all of those departments through the one uh, page. But for right now, we would have to do that manually to move you around to give you access to the different departments. But I am happy to do that if it's going to make your life a lot easier as the coordinator. So we've logged in, and uh, this is the area where you're going to start tracking your training. You will notice on the left-hand side all of the available certifications that can be tracked through the online system. We have several more that are available that just have not been added to this yet. They will probably be added by the end of December uh, to give you access to all of those to be able to, to start tracking that training. Certifications through SFFMA are based on NFPA standards, so they are going to be listed by their NFPA standard number. Uh, you will notice also that Firefighter has been broken down into three areas. Introductory, which is a subset of the Firefighter 1 training required in order to do um, live fire training per NFPA 1403. Then this one is going to be the remainder of that Firefighter 1 training. And this also includes hazmat awareness and ops from NFPA 472. Firefighter 2 is just the Firefighter 2 objectives of uh, 1001. The first step to getting someone moving towards certification is to enroll them in a program. So for the example of this one, we will go with driver operator. And when you select a, any uh, certification from this list, you will be presented with three buttons. 
The first one will be to add enrollments, that is to add new enrollments that are not already added. A class entry page, and this is where you'll go in to add multiple objectives to multiple individuals at one time. And then here you have status, uh, training status and upload certs. This is where you can review someone's training status as well as to upload certifications, uh, training completion certifications such as commission, basic, or driver operator, or if they've completed an academy. So first we're going to go into add enrollments. And for today's uh, demonstration, we're going to go to Eddie, Indiana. I guess I should have called him Gary, Indiana. We will enroll him. This is a good time to mention that uh, if you are idle for 15 minutes, it will automatically log you out of the system, and you will have to log back in. Your progress through that specific class entry will not be saved. You would have to start over. So you want to be very careful that you keep moving through the process. So we'll go back to Firefighter 1. And here we'll go to the class entry page. When we do, you're going to see that Mr. Indian is not there. Hold on a second, let me go back. Nope, oh, sorry, we did drive our record anyway. So go to class entry page. And there's Mr. Indiana. Okay. So for this one, we are going to go add a class to show you all how to do that. In this portion, you will want to use the forward, the back, and next buttons that are in, integrated into the class entry page. You don't want to use your browser's back and forward buttons just because uh, due to some of the security keys on the back end, it may or may not affect how that class entry page is going to work. So you will want to use these uh, back and next buttons that are integrated into the form. On this screen, you're going to see everyone who has been enrolled in Driver Operator. And so these are options of people that you can mark as having completed a given training day. You can either select individual names, or you have the option of checking the top box, and it will select everyone on that list. You can also uncheck it, and it will then pull those back out. For this one, we're going to select Mr. Indiana. Select Next. The next screen here is the module selection, and it will provide you a list of all of the objectives, full text objectives, that are required for this certification. As part of the data transfer program uh, pro project from the old online system, some of these objectives will be moved over from what was Firefighter. Um, the objectives were doing double duty toward Firefighter and Driver Operator, so they'll be credited toward Driver Operator under this curriculum. One of the major changes from the old program, in addition to having the option of tracking driver operator, uh, as well as all the other certifications outside of Firefighter, is full text objectives. So when you're going in to add a class and you don't remember what a specific objective was, you have the full text here to review back to. If you're looking for a specific objective, you can always hit Control F for Find on any browser. And you can go in here and type in a word like uh, body. It will then highlight that. If it does occur in more places, you can generally hit, there's generally a, a forward and back button to give you the option to find multiple copies of that. On some of the larger objectives, uh, especially in Firefighter, you're going to notice that we did break out the actually here's a good example right here, um, 503 that we did break out some of these subheaders to their own specific objectives, so that if they happen to have done only one or two or more parts of that, but not the whole uh, list of subheaders, you can give them partial credit. Whereas previously you'd have to uh, maintain separate notation there at the department as far as which subheaders had been done, and then you could give them full credit for that objective once they'd finished all of them. This way, if they did partial credit, you can give them partial credit to, toward that full objective completion. So we're just going to select a couple on this list and hit the Next button. This will be the first of two review pages just to give you a chance to review, make sure that everything is correct in the system. So right now we're adding a training class for Eddie, Indiana, covering these objectives. 
and this is where you would add the class completion date. If this is a single class, you would just put the date that the class took place. If it's a course that they went to, you would be able to add the last date of that class uh, as the completion date. You can either type in the full date here, or if you select the little calendar icon, it will pull up a little calendar that you can use and go backwards and forwards to select that date as necessary. So we've so selected November 15th. Hit Next. This will again give you the option to review. This is specifically the information you're wanting to add to the system that Eddie and Deanna did complete these objectives on November 15th of 2016. We want to make sure that you take the time to review this very carefully. Because we are dealing with security keys in place of just the ID number of the individuals on the back end, it is more difficult for information to be hacked out of the system. But at the same time, while it doesn't make, does make that more secure, it does make it more difficult to go in and make changes once that's been made, um, as opposed to the previous system where you could go into a given class, make adjustments, and have that immediately tracked. This is a system where you would you're basically setting these the examples to be pushed through to the database on the back end. Um, and any edits would be rather significant um, and time consuming. So we want to make sure that you take the opportunity for these two review pages to make sure the information is correct before you hit record completions. That said, we're going to go ahead and record completions. It will take you back to this landing page. You will frequently be thrown back to this landing page um, to navigate through to the system. We'll go back to driver operator. Any classes that have been entered will be thrown into a spooler to be processed through uh, in time posted order along with all the other classes from all the other members in the state. Right now I believe it's running on an hourly basis. Uh, if necessary, we can bump that up to uh, 30 minutes, and, uh, but we will see how things go moving forward. Now that we've entered a class, we can go in and check training status. This will also give you a list of all of the individuals that have been enrolled in this course. If necessary, you can look up a specific name, especially if you're in a larger department and you want to see just some people whose last name starts with A, you would be able to select that. And it will provide just a list of people who uh, have last names starting with A. So this is considerably helpful for being able to find specific individuals on that larger list. So we'll go ahead and take that out and go back because we want to go look at Mr. Indiana's record. So we'll click on Mr. Indiana. This is where the full curriculum for the course will be posted, showing also their progress toward any of those stages of certification, as well as any specific objectives for this program. you'll see the full text available. The first step for uh, documenting of the training, or let me back up and rephrase that, the Certification Board has set Courage to be Safe as a prerequisite for all certifications in the, certif in the SFMA certification program. To mark this as complete, you'd click on Courage to be Safe. We do give you the URL of where you can find that course online which is CTBS, everyonegoeshome.com, and we'll record completion. Now in this one you have the option of uploading a course completion certificate, but that is not required. I do have one made up for Mr. Indiana though, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll select the file, and that's on the desktop. And Indiana occurs to be safe. Here's a description that you can put as far as a description of the, of the actual certificate. That's what it will save here. If you do have any additional notes, you can also add this to the page like um, uh, online class 
eight hours. And you'd also mark the completion date. Now this is the one field that is required on the Curds Be Safe. It's indicated by an asterisk. And we'll just go ahead and say it was done on October 14th of 2016. I don't even remember the date that I put on the certificate. Save. And it will start thinking for a second. And reload. Now this has the Curds Be Safe has been marked as completed. You'll notice that training completion is now keyed as in progress. And there's a paper clip over here that refers back to the, the certificate that we just uploaded. At any point, you can go back and review this. And it will open up that class, the certificate that you previously uploaded. This is available to you as well as the Austin staff. So if there's any questions about it, we can go back and, and review that and talk about it. So this one has been completed uh, with, the, with the October 14, 2016 date. Now that that has been done, you also notice that these specific headers, uh, the objective links, are now hyperlinks, whereas previously they were not. If you are reviewing someone's training status and you realize, hey, this one objective I know that I, they did it, and for some reason it's not corrected. You can go in and individually mark this one objective as completed. Your other option is, and, and as we go through, and we're waiting for that class entry page to, to run through the spooler, these will end up marking as completed with the date. Your other option is to do a certificate upload. Actually, before I get ahead of myself, let's go back to the top. So we've marked that uh, Mr. Indiana has completed his Courage to be Safe. Once you upload this as completed, then any subsequent enrollments will also show this has been completed. And just to give you just uh, Example of that, we're going to go back to the roster and we'll go to Firefighter 2 and add an enrollment for Mr. Indiana. Now, when we go back to Firefighter 2 and review his training status. that requirement is marked as completed. So you only have to do it once that, and it will pick up on the subsequent uh, enrollments. The only issue with this that we've seen so far is that if he was previously enrolled in something, and I enrolled him in introductory previously, this may not always pick up. So uh, I have a ticket item open with the programmers to review this so that it, it picks up on all enrollments, not just subsequent ones. So we go to Mr. Indiana's record. And this is showing that he still needs to complete this. So he, I had previously enrolled him in introductory, so it's not picking that up because he was already enrolled in this. Um, but like I said, I'm in the process of trying to get this fixed so that uh, it will pick up on those uh, certifications that he may already be enrolled in. At any point, you can also, I believe on all of them, go in and cancel a program enrollment. If you cancel an enrollment for an individual, you're just removing their enrollment, not their, their objective completions. So then if we go back to uh, introductory, actually let me try that again. So if we refresh this page, this should show then that he's able to be enrolled or he's not. Let's 
go back to this main list. Introductory. And see if we can re-add his enrollment. There's Mr. Indiana. Again, if any objectives were marked as completed, they will still show as completed when we re-enroll him. Uh, but it should also pick up any extraneous other options like the courage to be safe that we added previously. And we'll double check this. OK, it did mark that he has his courage to be safe completed. So that's one way around the, the hinkiness of the program. Um, but we'll, we'll try to get the programmers to fix that for you so you don't have to deal with it on a regular basis. So the next thing we want to look at is uploading a course completion certificate. So we're going to go to here to Firefighter 2 and double check that Mr. Indiana is enrolled in this one. He is enrolled because he's no longer showing up on this roster. So I'll show you how to, like we discussed, um, for any of these objectives, if you're looking through this and see that, oh, no, I know that he completed this one objective. Why is it not marking as completed? You can go in here, record completion, and put in the date that they completed that. So we'll also put 10, 10, 10 of 16, save. So if it's a one-off objective, you can do this through the, the uh, uh, review page to make those changes, and you'll see it's marked as complete on 10, 10 of 16. Once each of these objectives is completed, this section where it says in progress will also be changed to read completed. That will then, and we're going to scroll down to the bottom. I apologize if this makes you nauseated. This will then bring you down to the application submission area, which is required but is not active yet because the previous section has not been completed. One of the options that we've made available to you all is that in addition to marking each specific objective completed or doing a class entry, you can additionally add a course completion certificate in place of doing all of those. So if we have someone who went to an academy, you'd be able to upload their academy completion certificate. That would then cue the Austin office to review the certificate and approve it. Once approved, it will give exactly the same credit towards certification as going through and marking each of these objectives completed. For Mr. Indiana, I have an example of a Commission Basic Firefighter Certificate that we will go ahead and upload for him. And this will require an attachment of a file. We'll attach a file that I happen to have on desktop as well. You can put a description. This will be what shows as the name of the file. Upload. Again, you can add notes. So if it's an academy, you can say it was Kilgore College Academy, um, Angelina College, uh, what have you. Or if it's a Instructor 1 certificate, you can upload and say it's a Teach Instructor or that they went to an area school or an annual school. And this is just extraneous information that is not necessary for the association, but it may help you in uh, reviewing the information. The date is required. So we're going to put 12-31-2014 for the date. And again, I forgot what date's on the certificate, but it doesn't matter in this instance. This will take a few minutes to, or a few moments to go through. Training completion is still in progress because it has not been reviewed by Austin staff yet. But if we scroll all the way back down to the bottom, you'll now see that this is awaiting approval by the Austin staff. So what do we see on the Austin staff side? So this is what I see when I log into the system in the morning. I'll refresh this. 
looks like I have some stuff to review here sh shortly. Okay, and here is Mr. Eddie Indiana with his Commission Basic Firefighter. I will click on this link, which then prompts me to open the file to review. Any notes that you've put in there to me, you can I can read there. And this will open up, and I can see, yes, Mr. Eddie Indiana has his Commission Basic Firefighter. I can always go back and review this from the Commission's website if there's any questions about it. But for the purposes of this, this looks great to me. So I can go ahead and cancel this. Now, for Mr. Indiana, I can mark that as approved. When I approve this, this will credit completion for training for Firefighter 1 Intro, Firefighter 1, and Firefighter 2, all three. This should also give credit for them toward the exams for Firefighter 1 and 2 as well, so that would not have to be separately documented. So let's go back over, now that we're done with the staff site, we'll go back over to this page and refresh. His training has been completed. Scroll down to here. This has been marked as completed and it's accepted. It has been completed here and accepted for testing as well. So now you would need to submit the application. For this, we are in the process of creating a single application that you would be able to submit for an individual. So if you have completed the documentation for all of their certifications for intro, Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, and also any other certifications. So if the system has documentation that they've completed their training for Instructor 1, Fire Officer 1, as well as Incident Safety Officer, you would be able to use one single application form to submit that for processing. Once that's done, this will be marked as completed. This will then also mark as completed because this step is done. And then we would be able to issue the certification. Uh, your other options are you can upload a commission basic exam. And so that's the letter that they would receive back from the, from the commission that they've passed the exam. Or if you need to put a copy of their FIDO account information on there, you can email me or you can upload a PDF of their FIDO account information. IFSAC or Pro Board seals also count equally toward having completed this exam option as well. So that is the nuts and bolts of the online system. We are going to be adding additional functionality to the system as that is available to us. Um, you should see a f more expansive list of optional certifications here within the next couple of weeks, as well as that single application form to be uploaded and available to you all. One thing I do want to mention is that anytime there is a certification change, as far as the minimum requirements for a certification, those are dated January 1st of the following year. So for example, um, starting January 1st, 2017, the uh, traffic safety class is going to be a minimum requirement as a prerequisite for Firefighter 1 what we'll do is we'll create a new Firefighter 1 with the 2017 date out here and re-register everyone for that new certification. Their old credits will transfer across, but that will give you an update of how they currently fall during the, uh, with the current standard. So we will be doing that as any additional changes come through. We will automatically update those and push those registrations across from the previous version. That's one reason that we do suggest that once you do see that uh, an individual has met all their training requirements, that you submit an application immediately. That will lock in the application date so it will be processed under that standard and not the subsequent one. We are also in the process of having this set that as soon as someone does complete their training requirements, that the system will send an email to the address on record for the coordinator as well as the applicant to let them know. Um, one thing I didn't go over but I need to stress is that if you all upload a certificate 
and there's any issues with it, I can send you all a notice either through the website prior to accepting it for clarification. Um, or I can reject it with a comment that you all would be able to read. Um, one other option that is available to you all. Uh, in place of a report that we are in the process of getting fixed, if you go to the training status area on any of the certifications and select a name, if it finishes, you can print this page and it will give the individual a full breakdown of the text of the objectives as well as what they've completed, which will also show what they need. So you can use that in place of an uh, individual training summary for them for the meantime. So that's an option for you to, to get around the, the limitations of the program for the meantime. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you do have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention is on the email that you just received or that, uh, that you received with the link to this video, there's a link to an online quiz. You will need to complete that in order to receive credit for having completed this video. Uh, we want to make sure you watch it all the way to the end, so that's why I'm waiting to tell you about it now. Uh, if you'll complete that, that uh, survey, uh, be sure to include your ID number as well as your name and your email address, and I will let you know that I have that recorded for you. And that way we can make sure to let your zone reps know who may not have viewed it so that we can go back and make sure you all have been provided that training uh, as necessary. Again, if, my name is Kevin Creamer at the State Firefighters and Fire Marshals Association. If you do have any questions at any time, feel free to give me a call at area 512-454-3473. You can also email me at certification at sffma.org. Thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll be making some additional up updates to uh, the system to make your life a lot easier. If you do have any suggestions, please let me know. I greatly appreciate them. Um, upgrades and performance updates uh, coming from membership are always stressed uh, over those submitted by staff. So please let me know if you have any suggestions. Thank you and have a great day.